Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a, another tutorial, this time on weathering effects, destroyed items, um, kind of that vein of thing, uh, things that are worn down, torn apart, put back together again. I personally, I just love the way those things look and I'm going to be sharing with you how I do that myself. Um, I actually haven't had a good excuse to do this in some time. In fact, a drawing that I kind of just put up uh, reminded me of that I used to do this. So that's kind of what started this. And for me at least, uh, weather down items tell a much better story than brand new pristine things. And I love, love seeing things that are rust covered and with holes in them and things like bolted back on and screwed back together. It's just great and it looks amazing and it's an excuse to do a lot of detail and a lot of little tiny pieces that most people won't notice and they'll only ever see is the whole piece and it's just, it's just great. Um, here, I already did all the line work for this and I might go in and refine the lines a little bit to kind of make some points but uh, the majority of the line work is all done here and it's a kind of character of mine that I've had for a while but I don't use that much unless I do excuses for things and it's hell his name didn't even come apart come about until I started just calling him steampunk robo fox and he's not even steampunkish anymore I think he should just be called Robo Fox at this point. I mean, the only thing slightly steampunkish about him is that the backgrounds are sometimes steampunkish. It's that's it. Um, and things that really help with this style before we jump in is to kind of know what's going to be worn out first. I mean, with this, you can already tell a bunch of panels are there, and there's things that kind of shouldn't be put together that are. Uh, if this was just kind of straight lines, or not straight lines, but like, you know, not broken apart already, it'd be really difficult to put those things back in afterwards. So it's recommended to kind of already make it look worn down before you even get to the wearing down stage. So let's actually get started here. Uh, I'm going to remove the fences because that's not really going to be seen that much, uh, except towards the end maybe. And we're going to zoom in. Let's start working on the face here, namely this side panel. So the way you want to really do this, I'm just going to show this example of the side panel first, is you want to take the whole thing, make another layer, or maybe not, depends on what program you're using or what you're doing, if you're not, if you're doing it digitally or not. Then you kind of take a basic color. So I'm going to be using gray for this one. And fill it in. There you go. Kind of like steel, right? Right. So as we zoom in here, now you're going to want to go back in and kind of get all these little points in, in here. This may be an excuse to cover things up, but you still have to make it look good to start. Now the majority of this character is actually metal. And metal, depending on what metal it is, has different ways of rusting, corroding, and weathering. Uh, this one, let's just say it's steel or some type of shiny silverish metal. Uh, generally, those things go away by rusting or turning brown and dingy, being covered in dirt, and things breaking off of them and forming sharp points or holes that were poked through them eventually becoming larger and wearing out. So the way you go about doing that, at least for uh, this steel, or at least the way I do it as well, is you want to take a brown and you just want to kind of cover up in random spots. In fact, that's a little bit too vague. I want that to be a little bit more refined. So these outer bits, I want them to look like they're broken off and maybe have just like a bit right here where the water would slide down the sides and probably stay a little bit longer than it would normally. And there you have your first steps. Now the thing with weathering, and I'm just going to be using weathering instead of rusting because it, not everything rusts, but everything weathers and wears down. The thing with weathering is that you have to build it up in slow stages. So you start with the really kind of light shade and really vague shade, and that goes across the entire thing. 
then you kind of go back in with a little bit of a darker shade, or at least for rust, you go in with a darker shade, and you kind of just bring out what should be there. So none of this is going to be like hard set edges. If you ever uh, like see an old rusted box car or something, I used to live near train tracks, so I'd see that all the time. Um, you would see kind of the bolts of metal that were put into it, but you wouldn't. You would see the streaks. You would never see the. You would never see kind of a hard edge to it, and you really want that to come through. Like across this entire thing here, I, I'm never doing this. That doesn't happen. That just looks like it's covered in mud. We don't want it to look like it's covered in mud. We want it to look like it's covered in rust. And rust's properties are, well, kind of like if you take a single brush stroke and just do that. That's more like rust than that. Just as long as you keep that in mind, it's kind of tough to go wrong. Outside of that, it kind of comes down to knowing where rust would be forming. So along this top edge, where I imagine water would be coming down and running down the edge of this, and maybe a couple times falling down in the middle or catching this lip here and running down the side. Understanding that that's where they, the water would stay longer is where the rust would be heaviest. So I have this kind of brownish shade put in here. But I'm actually going to go one step darker and a couple steps smaller and I'm going to be going in kind of the very very tips. Now for this specific part I'm using three layers of the color, three, co three layers of brown, three layers of rust. Uh, because these points I want them to seem like they're especially corroded off. Kind of like the sharp points were only formed because the the carriages never took care of these side panels and so or they even found them uh torn apart like this and so we just kind of picked them up and bolted them on and that seems to be a theme with this character is he doesn't make anything of his own he just kind of finds things that he likes the looks of and replaces his own parts with them now up here i'm naturally not going to be bringing this dark shade down there down that little point i'm just kind of going to be carrying it around the side now notice that for this uh, kind of outermost layer, I'm actually making it really squiggly. I'm not making any well-defined edges or anything like that. And you don't have to do that. Um, for this last bit, you can make these a bit more straight and narrow instead of going all crazy and loopy like that. But, like, that's the rust down. And if we zoom out a little bit, that actually looks like it's properly rusted. But it's kind of missing a couple of things, don't you think? Um, there's a couple of things I was talking about this whole time that would be rusted. And that would be bolts. Now, imagine, for example, you just pick this thing up off the ground. And if you just find a piece of metal along the ground, chances are like, there's not going to be just a little tab that says plug me in here. So it would need to be bolted on or attached in some way. So, like, just imagine you found this thing. You'd be finding just about anything you could to be able to attach it properly. And I don't know, he's a robot. Maybe you can say he just punches it really hard to get the bolt to stay. So every single thing would run along the edge. I'm not going to do stuff along the bottom. And I made them all different sizes because he'd be finding anything he could. And then you kind of just bring the rust along this instead. Now, with a new hole like this, it would be bringing about new rust lines, new ways for the water to grab onto, and new ways for it to condense downwards. So, in this case, it would actually be very heavy directly underneath and kind of drip down. Some of them would drip down more than others. In fact, this one I'm going to kind of drip down pretty far, just to kind of make it feel a little bit different. That's a special bolt. Or is it secret now? <laughs> and as I go up here, I just kind of, they're slowly tapering off for no real good reason. And the rust lines go straight, 
straight down because that's the way gravity would fall is and that's the way the water would be taken and down here it would actually carry over between these so it would wrap around and it would keep on going down because these are in a line vertically so it would they would carry over each other quite well of course wrapping around in both ways not just around the one direction no reason for it to just wrap around one sided now these also have to have the little in-depth pocket directly underneath in fact that one was probably brought along down just a little bit too far but Eh, there's no issue with uh, having one or two that are just kind of a little bit awkwardly placed. Things that, you know, may be a bit too dark or maybe a bit too light. Because you don't know what the character or what situation has come about to cause these weathering effects. So, for things to kind of be a little bit uneven and a little bit unnatural, it actually adds to the overall effect. Because you don't know what caused them. And of course the bolts themselves need to be properly rusted. I'm going to be making them a little bit simply rusted. I'm not going to go too crazy with these. Just because I I feel like they would be too obscured being surrounded by so much rust as is. I figure they might as well be a little bit easier to tell. Then if I take kind of... Oh, that's not the right shade. Right there. If I take a little bit of a dark thing and kind of imply... A middle maybe a screw or something like that that would probably help the effect that these are attached attachments they aren't uh, they aren't put there just by the bolt itself they're, or no, they're not put there by the panel they're kind of just attached on so we zoom out again see that's looking a lot more weathered and a lot more rusted and a lot more personal than if you just had a gray piece of metal and one more thing I'm going to be showing on this panel. Um, I don't think any of the panels after this are going to be this complex, but I figure it's one panel. Let's just show you everything. The last thing is going to be scratches. Now, scratches come in the form of two different parts. A bright line and a dark line. It's very simple as that. You put a very bright line across, and then you take another one, that's darker and put it right next to it and that implies that the light's catching on this upper bit and it's shadowed on a lower bit now this is actually backwards because I want the light to be above so you actually want the dark part to be towards the light in this case because the light part is the other end it's not popping out it's going in so that's what how the scratches would form and they wouldn't be very uniform they'd kind of go across like this and cross each other and do these fancy things and maybe some of them were are deeper than others and that's too deep <laughs> and maybe some of them are really light tiny little scratches and after you have all of one of them down you kind of just put in the dark side towards where your light source will be keeping in mind that these are dips and drops in the surface itself in fact, how, with how wide I made these, it's probably a little bit uh, too deep and too in-depth for how I want that to look. But if we zoom back out, they show up quite nicely, because it's still kind of a small panel. I mean, that's one panel out of, what, two dozen, three dozen panels? And even if you only use one or two of these styles on each one, it'll make the whole thing seem really worn down and, well, in my eyes, prettier. And of course the rust would catch in these and kind of drip down as the water would as the water kind of would stay in them slightly longer so you can kind of go through and uh, bring that out a little bit and in this larger area right here there there might be like an area of rust that's darker right in the middle and since it kind of flakes out doesn't exactly uh rust doesn't like to form in one big blob it will kind of spread out as much as possible finding these lines of weakness underneath and it'll just lift up the outer plate as the metal expands and as the metal uh, just disappears underneath 
So you get these areas like this. I'm going to actually bring this back in just slightly. And that's one panel. Yeah. But as I said, it doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to do all this for one panel. Now, that's for steel. Let's, let's kind of find another part and assume it's a different metal. Um, let's actually just work on the opposite side here. Selection and then you increment it out just so that it gets a better coverage. Now, this side, let's say it's copper. Now, preserve opacity again. Now, copper rusts in a bit of a different way. It doesn't so much disappear, it actually gains a patina, which is a, uh, in this case, a green outer barrier, which actually will protect the metal. So, uh, copper kind of does the exact opposite of, uh, of rust, or copper does the opposite of iron wherein the older it is, it's actually safer. But it will kind of form more gradually and more slowly. So you want this stuff to be a bit more blended in and a bit more vague as to where it's actually at. Except in certain areas where it will actually be a bit more solid. That's a bit too bright, so I'm actually going to kind of bring that back down. But the way that uh, the way that copper actually forms its patina is just by contact with the air. It oxidizes in the same way and just reacts with oxygen and forming this outer layer. So it will uh, it'll be a lot more vague as to where it is because water contact doesn't doesn't do a whole lot, I and mean, it still will. So you still have to take that in consideration as you're doing this but it has a much slower effect uh, with, water, uh, with water than uh, iron or steel will. So if you zoom back out, that's copper. And of course it will be scratched in the same way as well. Although I feel copper is just a little bit stronger when it comes to being, uh, when it comes to being scratched. It won't get a lot of Little, it won't get a lot of big nicks, but it will be scratched with a bunch of tiny scratches much easier. So, if we go through and just kind of get a bunch of little things going. And then you kind of just take the darker shade and go over the top of it. Just like before. The, with scratches, you want the darker side to be towards the light source. There you go, two different panels. Personally, I like the look of copper a lot more than the look of uh, look of iron, so I might put a little bit more of that in, but too much of one thing will just look bad. Now, another thing to consider when doing multiple different pieces of one thing is that they will interact with each other. So, Say this is another large piece of copper, making the face a lot of copper. This stuff will come off and actually will be affecting the layer underneath it. So this down here might be a little bit denser than directly above it. Like up here, I'm not going to put anything up there. But directly underneath, I am. Because it's in direct contact with the patina, and you can imagine that as water goes down, it might be cross-contaminating what's underneath it, leading it to be affected just as much, if not more, than what would be directly above it. Same goes for this thing down here. Even though I'm probably going to be making that next triangle steel, or metal, a different metal, it still would be carrying over directly underneath it just as well. And just for kind of aesthetic value, I think I'm going to be putting some underneath the eye. This eye is going to be uh, green, as this character's kind of power source-ish is, uh, is just this green cell that appears in his chest. So, 
a lot of this is just kind of building up the layers, understanding that just having a solid area of green does nothing, but having kind of this hinted line of green will make things look a lot, a lot prettier in my eyes. Again, a weathered effect thing is easy to overdo. You could very easily get lost in the mess and suddenly this thing that's supposed to look like he's kind of worn out and personalized is suddenly like broken down, hobbled, and you're surprised it's even standing anymore. Which depends on the look you're going for. Like with this thing, I think I am going to make him a bit more worn down than I'm used to. Which is kind of strange to say because normally I, uh, I make him without an arm. This is the first time he's had an arm in a very long time. But that looks a lot more personal than if it was just one solid chunk of a single metal. And since it's taking up a large portion of the face, I figure it shouldn't be as rusted, as patinaed, as weathered. See, that's the word I've been using this whole time. I couldn't remember it right there. But I didn't want it to have as much weathering effect as this area did right here. Because this is something you're going to be seeing a lot of. And that's kind of a side detail. So you don't want a large flat area to be as effective. In fact, I probably overdid it for this panel down here, but I'll let that one go because it, it uh, was my example one. And of course, all along here, you're also going to have bolts as well. So, I don't know, just not even in any real order or any real scrutiny. Just keeping in mind what panels went on when. So I'm going to imagine that this panel here went on after this one. So it shouldn't actually have bolts visible because this thing would be covering up those bolts. But on this side, it looks like this panel went on first. So this side will have bolts on it. And as I bring these down, maybe vary up the size a little bit. I'm not going to have one right there. Same goes for right here. Now, for the, this panel itself, I'm not actually going to have it bolted on or attached in any way. I just feel as though that the shape doesn't imply that it would have anything. Maybe it's just kind of jammed in or crushed in or something. That might explain the shape. I'm going to leave these two bolts in just because it'll help add to the uh, randomness factor. And these bolts are a different metal, as you can see. So they would actually rust as a, as a steel or iron would. And just because the thing underneath it isn't the same material doesn't mean that it won't be affected in some way by this bit actually rusting. So this is going to be a kind of a brighter orange. But the rust would still carry down underneath it. This stuff will still, will still drip. It's, uh, the rust of it dripping down is not the stuff underneath it reacting, a large portion of it is actually just the material itself being dragged down. So if you go through and kind of bring out this rust, that's a little bit too bright, I'm going to darken that. There you go. So if you kind of bring this through and darken the rust, and bring that rust everywhere that the water would bring it, again, assuming that water is the reason that this stuff is rusting so heavily, it would still drip, and it would still go down. So, again, all of these screws, you have, to, you have to be very scrutinizing with how you weather things. That's right, the puns are starting. Everyone turn off your videos now. No remorse. No remorse for your puns. I can, I can hear people complain already. That was so bad. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Now, this stuff up here, since this panel went on over the panel underneath it, it should be a little bit higher than the panel underneath it as well. So it wouldn't have as much actually running along its side. That would mostly be underneath it or on the panel down here. So for this case, it's not actually going to drip down so much as the other stuff did but it's still going to be just as rusted on the bolt itself. 
No, I forgot two. It's easy to get lost on this. It just looks so pretty. I'm, I'm so excited to be showing this uh, the way I do weathering. Because it's just something I love to do, and I love finding excuses to do it. I uh, once got lost for like six hours doing a single drawing because uh, I was still learning how to weather things, and I didn't know when to stop. In the end, it actually did not turn out that well because I had put too much into it. But if you're willing to work small, you have a lot to work with. So that's that panel of the face. And if we zoom this out to kind of a normal distance, you can still see all those bolts and you can still see the areas where the patina are. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit more because resolution issues. Um, you can still see those patinas and you can still see where it was weathered and where the rust is. But since you're so far out, it kind of merges together a little bit. And that's the effect you want. You don't see rust directly on top of copper that easily. Over here you do, but that's because of the nature of it. Now let's move over to a bit of a different material than metal. So this, pen, this thing right here, let's say it's a rubber material of some sort. Um, maybe a black rubber. Just found some tubing maybe. Oh look, I have a thing up right here. Uh, it's just some... Black tubing, let's actually make that a little bit of a different shade. There you go. Red with age. Take out the brush. And the way that kind of rubber would be weathered is certain areas would actually turn bright or white. Now, of course, in this case, different materials will vary greatly. But things that are flexing a lot should have an altered color. Things that bend, things that wrinkled out, those things will be affected greatly by their motion, by their constant motion, wherein things that are more still won't be. Now, of course, the whole thing will be affected because everything is moving to some degree. It's just certain things aren't. Now, for this, I'm imagining that there's these metal rings underneath that are kind of helping to facilitate the motion. So those areas would be uh, much more affected than the recess areas. And that's where these lines are kind of here for, just to kind of just illustrate that point further. And that's another fun thing with weathering, is that you can kind of make up these little stories that you can bring out easier. Just this, this thing is so old, and it's been on this, been on this character for so long that it's just, being worn down to nothing. And I love that idea. And it's kind of sad to think about, because like this joint is soon to no longer be able to function, or maybe it is, it's going to get a hole in it soon. I mean, I wish I could think of a way to add a hole into this right now, but I can't, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to ruin the effect. But just that idea that he's going to have to go out and replace this part, or else maybe his arm will lock up and freeze. And that same idea will carry over to a lot of other things. Say you have an old car in the middle of a in the middle of a driveway, one that the owner says, "Oh yeah, I'll work on that this weekend," or uh, "Yeah, I'm gonna be fixing it up soon," or "I'm gonna take it to a place soon," and he's been saying that for ten years. Like you can just imagine how something like that would be worn down. How it would just be sitting there for ten years with no use on it. Maybe the Maybe the doors grew a hole in it in the rust, which actually I should probably be showing that here, how you make a hole instead of just like areas. But, ah, oh, so many stories with wedded items. And that may stand out now, but when I get the rest in on this, uh, maybe not so much. Uh, what would have a hole in it? Hmm. Hmm. This panel. Pick a panel, any panel. Increment. Increment. Icarus. Alright. Uh, let's make this a different type of steel, maybe. A lighter one. There. That looks nice. It looks nice now. Now, as I go through, let's say that right here is going to be a hole. Great looking hole, I know. Let's actually 
just erase it out first. Now, the thing with a hole is that the edges of it are going to be a very, very strong rust because these things are just about to fall off. So it'll be kind of this really nice dark shade, almost brick-like. And the way that rust works is it doesn't like hard edges so much, but the edge that kind of broke off will be kind of spotted. It'll be the kind of weird edges, it, erratic. It won't be that solid of a, of a look or feel to it. In fact, this thing is probably just a little bit too circular, so I'm going to be bringing it out this way. There we go. That's looking pretty nice. Woohoo! Don't tell anyone I said that. <laughs> I feel like such a dork. Um, so, with that right there, let's kind of redefine this outer area a little bit more, just so I don't have to add it to it later. And I completely covered that up. So no problem. Give me a good excuse to go back in. And bring it back in. Aha. Now, as this kind of forms out, it will form out in kind of the same way, wherein it will be really sporadic, not, not uniform in any real way. It just won't want to be uniform. As I said, these rust, uh, or at least weathering effects, they find the weakest points in whatever material it is and exploit it. So that weakest point will sometimes be like a difference of a quarter of an inch in some cases, or just some tiny, tiny little amount that caused it to go from one direction to the other. Maybe a slight deficiency in, in iron in one spot will make it not rust as hard as the area right next to it, which does have slightly more iron in it. So as this panel continuously be, gets messed up around its ridges. As this panel is kind of worn down, you can zoom out, and while it would be forming this large area around it, it would mostly be going underneath, as, again, the water will be dragging down around or through the hole. And this will be dripping down here. And this would be really, really dark, because it's coming directly out of this, which is a freaking hole in, in the material. That'll cause a lot of a lot of it to carry down and to drip down and affect what's underneath it and around it. So as this area down here gets kind of rusted, it would pop up too. Maybe it'll go up here just slightly, slightly, and it'll just kind of form out, and naturally it would go all the way down. And say this area is kind of a dip. So it'll catch here quite a bit, and that would probably form upwards as well. And that's how you create a hole in this. And of course, you can kind of put some scratches in this thing as well. And there, you, here's a tip, actually, for creating this effect easier. Never save your colors. Uh, well, I guess I really shouldn't say that for anything, but... At least for characters like this, where a lot of the parts are really sporadic, and you don't know what what they went through, you don't know why they're in the situation they're in, you don't know how he got them or how he bolted them on, you don't know why he needed a new part in the first place. Because of that, every single piece will most likely be from a different source, and it'll be acquired in a different state of of being. It'll be, some of it will be like really worn down already, some of it he'll pick up practically brand new. So to kind of help illustrate that point, and you can use this tip for other things, is to never save the colors. So say this metal color, I kind of like this metal color, so I'm going to take it, I'm going to move it over here, great, I'll use that color elsewhere. But in saving that color, I'm implying that a lot of the areas will be in a similar state, and they're not. I mean, some of these things will be brand new, and some of these things won't. 
and implying that they're from the same area or even in the same state will kind of deter that effect. Also, uh, us being people, we don't, we're very bad at making things very sporadic and very random. In fact, me talking while I'm doing this has probably helped me out a lot, so I don't have to think about anything really. But since we don't like being sporadic or random, or at least we're very bad at it, we, it'll be easier to make things a bit more random if you don't ever take the same color like this rust color. Every single time I've made this rust color different. Even though rust is pretty much the same color across the board, like I, you can go to different areas of the world and rust will pro probably be the same rust that you're looking at elsewhere. This area has a different life to it than this area up here. That area up there now suddenly looks grimy instead of rusted. And that kind of bugs me, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to fix it. Because nothing on this character is fixed. Nothing is fixed. So if I go up there and I try to fix that piece up, then that'll completely defeat the purpose of what the character is. And that's broken. So, as much as it may pain me to, I'm not going to be doing anything to that panel other than shading it later. And that will help add to the overall effect. And I mentally know that, so that's why I'm not going up there. And it really bugged me that I just zoomed out so I could look at it to prove that point, because now I really want to go up there and fix it, and that's... I can't. I can't. I might be able to do something to it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to risk it. Don't risk fixing what you broke. It's broken. Leave it broken. Person. Now I'm going on a tangent. No, no, no. Um, so this panel, other than that hole, I think I'm not actually going to make it too rusted out, too beaten up. I think that hole will probably be enough to give this panel its own its own little life. I just have to be careful that nothing is too... Mm, too solid. In fact, I kind of want these areas to blend out just a little bit more. So I'm going to go through right on right along the edges and kind of bring those back just a little bit that looks good constantly be zooming out when you're doing weathered effects and worn down pieces because staying zoomed in all the time you kind of lose sight of the whole panel like i probably wouldn't have done that entire outside area if i was just doing this streak because all i was seeing was the streak and i was like yeah that's a bunch of rust that looks great zoom out and it's a tiny hole like you could barely fit a finger through the, through the hole that I made in that panel, but it's still going to be there. Now let's make the bolts on this one. I'm actually going to make one of the bolts not there. I'm going to have one of the bolts kind of as though it had fallen out. Maybe the actual area itself got a little bit too rusted. So I'm going to have like the effects of it still be there. Just not as strong, because the bolt is no longer there to reinforce it. But I am going to keep the rust that it made. And I'm going to kind of look around it. A lot of this is just building up the same stuff over and over again. It's just, it's, it's going to be kind of boring in the end. But if you like doing this stuff like I do, you'll get a huge kick out of it. And in, and it's actually just something you can mindlessly work on, which is something I always enjoy. It's why I like doing a stippling every now and then, is because it's just an excuse not to think for like a few hours. If that, sometimes these things don't take so long, but you know, sometimes they do. And you'll notice that I actually made this, uh, these screws, the different color, shade. I don't know why. I didn't save the stuff from above, and I don't want these bolts to be the same color as what they're sitting on, so yeah, they're just kind of getting a different shade. Simple as that. And sometimes that's all you really need, but so long as it still looks rusted, looks shaded, then that's all you're gonna need. In the end, it, you just want things to be broken down. You want things to be worn out. 
You want things to have holes in them. You want stuff to be broken, scratched, worn, beat up. Like, that's just how it all works. And you want to keep that effect. Now, one last thing I'm going to be pointing out here before I get this in a time lapse, since I think this is going on a little bit long. Actually, that panel there is not touching, so I have to actually fix that line first. So, this area right here. Uh, the way I want it to look is I want it to look like a joint. I want it to look like a, a the elbow, essentially. So it's going to be a little bit of a stronger metal, like a steel. But it's going to be rusted, don't get me wrong, but it's both internal inside of this sleeve, and it's constantly rubbing up here against this thing. Imagine the joint moving in and out. It'll be kind of bumping up and rubbing edges with the back side of this thing right here and down here mostly. So those areas are actually going to be pretty clear rust. Because of the motion, it'll be keeping things from getting attached to it too much. And along with this thing being very internalized, it's not actually going to have a whole lot on it. Now I'm still going to have stuff kind of dripping down it as though it, it was, but the weathered effect caused by things uh, in motion is very different from the weathered effects of things in just a stationary area. Like the bolts, the bolts never moved, so there's no reason for those bolts to have like an in motion rust. But this stuff, this stuff is moving around a lot. I mean, it's his arm. You can flail your arm around. And your arm doesn't get, like, covered in beetles or something. I don't know. I don't know what happens to people when they kind of sit still for too long. I've never met anyone who sits still for too long. But that's about the most of rust that I'm going to put in that. In fact, that might be a bit much. I'm going to go through with this and kind of take off some of the rusted areas because it just wouldn't be there. There, that's a bit more reasonable. As for the areas where the stuff will be touching a lot and where they'll be rubbing up against each other that stuff will actually be scratched and it'll be kind of this worn down rubbed up against area uh, imagine if you took steel wool to like the surface of a table the friction caused between the steel wool and the table will cause a lot of these scratches to appear and that's a lot of the same effect here, although it's done over a much longer period of time. And once you have all of the kind of darker areas, you want to go through with something and bring them back a little bit. Because even though they may be there and be very, like, the scratches may be deep or they may be really light, they're still not going to be as dark as what you formed up here. In fact, you can't even see them. And that's probably for the better. You want to imply that that stuff is in motion. You want to imply that there, that there's friction happening between the joints and that there's stuff moving around. You don't want to point to and say, hey, that's moving. Because everything is moving. And if you point to one thing and say, hey, that's moving, that'll ruin it. So I think I showed all the major forms of weathering effects that I can think of, or at least that I can apply to this drawing. So I'm going to kick it in a time lapse here and work on it a lot more. Um, when it gets kind of towards the end, I'll wrap it up and I'll show you what all I did. See you then. And we're back. That took a little bit longer than I was expecting, I'll be totally honest. And I kind of knew what I was getting into when I started this episode. So, only have myself to blame. But it really should go to show to kind of know what you're expecting. Because I haven't done this style in so long that I forgot how long it takes. Um, I kind of jumped you all back in here when I was just finishing up the uh, fence here. Uh, 
I kind of made these open areas where the metal is going to look like it's rusted through and uh, kind of decrepit and not taken care of anymore. I mean, the whole fence isn't, but uh, these areas in particular, like, no one bothered to repair them. No one cares anymore to do so. Um, and I also forgot to extend this. Uh, the thing with, like, weathering small wires like this is when they eventually do break, they kind of recoil a little bit. Actually, it's nice that I'm, I set the background to, like, that green tint because you would not be able to see this otherwise. It would be kind of difficult to notice. And not only are those areas going to be tinted, but, like, this areas, like, up here are kind of starting to get rusted out around the edges so it's it's not just the broken areas that are weathered the whole thing is worn down and has seen better days it's just uh some areas um aren't doing so well that looks kind of nice not too much effort put into the fence itself but that would take away from the character itself. And I just realized something that I forgot. The hole that I put in, that I put so much effort into. Raw. I actually forgot to erase away. Oh, and I'm going to ruin all this definition I put into it. I'll put that right back in then. Oh well. Another excuse to kind of build up on this. Like, I complained about this taking a little while, but... It was fun. I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Simple as that. I mean, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have done it. So, again, as you saw me do before, it just kind of, you just kind of build it back up. And this is a little bit brighter, but I think that's actually a, a bit better. Because it makes it stand out just a little bit more against that uh, dark green background. And I wanted to kind of have this toxic feel to it or almost abandoned feel and with that I think I'm gonna call that the drawing notice how I didn't put any bright highlights on it because it's supposed to be a really dark and grubby feeling thing but I did have a couple bits that glowed two very different things highlights and glowing keep that in mind anyways uh, if you liked what you saw here Please try it out. I understand that this one kind of went a bit long, or at least it went a bit long on my end. So I don't know what uh, what you'd be willing to try out yourself. But um, if you're willing to put this much effort into a drawing, please, please feel free to try it and show me. Like in any way, shape, or form you want to. I'd love to see what people make. Anyways, uh, if you have any other suggestions on what I can make in future videos let me know down below or in any way you want and have a great day bye